Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today I will read from a book titled Creating the World, edited by Jacqueline Hoang Win and Rado Istok and published by Atene Press. Rado Istok wrote, the publication Creating the World presents research carried out by the artist Jacqueline Hoang Win in the archives of the Museum of Ethnography in Stockholm, Sweden. Initiated during her 2015 residency, the first artist residency that the museum would host, Wynn was confronted in the photographic archives not only with documentation of objects held in the museum's collection, but also with images documenting the activity of collecting itself. What the images revealed was the rarely seen labor of native peoples on whom the European museums depended heavily including for the transport of their culture. Photographs of native peoples carrying crates loaded with artifacts as well as equipment, and in some cases even transporting the European scientists themselves, expose practices of collecting as large logistical operations choreographed in the interests of sustaining the division of labor between the cognitive labor of the European scientists and the manual labor of the locals that the colonial administration would often source. Although some members of these native communities were able to perform the role of mediator, they were yet as anonymous as the people carrying the crates. Considering that European ethnographic museums and museums of world cultures have seldom questioned the logistics of transporting artifacts from their countries of origin to their collections, this publication attempts to address Jacqueline Hoan Wynn's simple yet troubling research question. How did the world came to Europe? Wynn first addressed uh, this question in her exhibition Black Atlas 2016 at the Museum of Ethnography in Stockholm. The present publication brings together this artistic research with a number of commissioned scholarly essays situating the artist's work in a broader theoretical and historical context. Black Atlas employed archival photographs and other documents in a forensic way, as a testimony to the silence history of exploitation on which the institution is built. The fact that the 20th century history of the Museum of Ethnography left a considerable photographic imprint made it possible for the artist to read the archival material against the grain of its original purpose. By turning the ethnographic gaze back onto the museum, Black Atlas reflected upon the administration of racialized labor deployed for transporting culture from various non-European countries to the museum's uh, showcases or more often to storage spaces. Some of the crates remain unopened to this day. Featuring archival material connected to prominent Swedish ethnographers and collectors such as Erik von Otter, Erik von Rosen, Gerard Lindblom and Josta Montel, as well as the numerous unnamed porters and caravan workers who carried their burdens, the visual documentation aimed to shift the viewer's attention from the singular figure of a celebrated explorer to the labor of anonymized local population. Black Atlas, titled after the mythological figure of a titan condemned to hold up the sky for eternity, is thus a modest acknowledgement of these native people, as well as a reminder of institutional indebtedness. This publication uses the exhibition Black Atlas as a point of departure for a reflection upon the historical and ideological constructions of material culture through collecting and photographic practices and for the subsequent knowledge production in Western museums. It consists of two intertwined parts, scholarly texts and image inserts. Four texts and two conversations aim to ground the Black Atlas in the nuances of its Swedish context and to situate the research within broader discussions concerning museology, collecting practices, politics of display, photography and not least citizenship. Among the texts offering critical analysis of Western museum practices, an essay by Ariela Azulei discusses the circulation of material culture from colonized countries to Western museums, 
focusing on the local labor, shipping and distribution of material culture as intrinsic to Western self-identification, as well as destructive of the social fabric of the source community. Osa Barati Larsson's essay delves into Sweden's colonial fever and imperial ambitions, illuminating the intersections between material culture studies, the history of collecting foreign cultures in relation to knowledge production, and their underlying racialized hierarchies. Vincent Normand reflects upon the exhibition medium as a producer of colonial discourses as well as Western citizenry. Using similar methods, Gabriel Moser examines the meaning of the wooden crates as they appear in the photographs she studies, as vessels for two-way cultural contamination and for the emergence of as yet limited civic rights for the indigenous communities of northern Canada. The publication concludes with voices from inside the institution. A conversation between Michael Barrett from the Museum of Ethnography in Stockholm and Wayne Modest from the Research Center for Material Culture in Amsterdam discusses the changing role of their respective institutions, the history, present and future of their collections, as well as the evolving position of photography. The six image inserts interspersed between the texts present groupings of archival photographs selected by the artist. These images provide the reader with an idea of the vastness of the museum's archival holdings, which the artist was confronted with and sought to navigate during her research residency and its eventual product, Black Atlas. They reveal the various kinds of images found in the museum archive, specific in terms of the photographer, location, date and the subject, but also representative of a broader typology of image. Evoking her experience of encountering these images, they are accompanied by the artist's commentaries, offering a more personal reading, often against the grain, of images found in an institutional archive. European ethnographic collections are increasingly contested. In Berlin, the Humboldt Forum plans to house the Ethnological Museum of Berlin and the Museum of Asian Art, bringing the link between imperialism and ethnography full circle. In apparent contrast to the situation in Berlin, French President Emmanuel Macron vowed during his three-day tour to Burkina Faso, Ghana and Ivory Coast in November 2017 to prioritize the return of African artifacts during his term. But restitution, while long overdue, can also be a tool of cultural and economic diplomacy and a means of perpetuating the fallacy that colonial wrongdoings can easily be undone simply by restituting some of the objects held in the European collections to their countries of origin. By contrast, Black Atlas points to the debts that can hardly be paid by focusing not so much on the restitution of objects but rather on labor, which should have been remunerated then and should now be remembered. Rooted in material from the museum's own archives, Wynne's exhibition and publication understand the ghosts residing in the unopened crates as part of the institution's foundations. Such ghosts are not so much ready to be shipped back as they are indicative of the gap between different bodies and the forms of knowledge such bodies carry and perform in European institutions today. The book was designed in Mexico City by Mini Super Studio and printed in Hong Kong by Regal Printing. It is an edition of 500. Ask for it at your local bookstore. Thank you for joining me today and see you in the next video. Bye.